Hello world, it's Birdo Prey 5 Kapla. Today we're going to look at the delayed copy of the third and final Star Trek Picard Countdown series comic book. We were supposed to get this comic book the week before the first episode of Picard premiered, and I'm sorry we didn't because it could have saved us hours and hours and hours of anti trekker complaining about the Romulans staying with Picard being slaves even if only figuratively. Instead of coming out a week before the premiere, it came out today, a week after. I suspect they needed to change the story at the last minute due to changes in Picard, but that's just my speculation. If you haven't seen my previous Picard countdown comic reviews for issues one and two, please click the link in the top right corner or check the description for the prior reviews. So let's just get into this book and get some answers, maybe. The book opens with Picard reminiscing to himself, thinking of how fortunate a life he has had. And then he corrects himself and says lives, plural. He remembers his time as a Borg and the time he lived an entire extra life in the TNG episode, The Inner Light, where he learned to play the flute after being zapped by a probe of a long dead civilization. He says his youthful quest for adventure led him to many unique experiences, both good and bad. We see a scene when he is being tortured by Cardassians, but they only drew in two lights. What's up with that? There were four lights. Curiously, we don't see his alternate life in the TNG episode Tapestry, where Picard apparently dies because of his artificial heart, only to find Q waiting for him in the afterlife. And Q gives him a chance to change a part of his past. Picard's final takeaway is, Nothing is as truly final as it seems. Because the second episode of Star Trek Picard is probably less than 12 hours away from airing by the time you see this, I don't have time to go through every page like I did in previous reviews. Instead, we'll talk about the details. This is everything we learned or were supposed to know before Star Trek Picard ever premiered. First and foremost, despite what some people, <coughs> anti trekker have been saying the supernova has not been retconned to only affecting the Romulan star system. This issue, like the first issue, makes it very clear this supernova is going to affect many Romulan planets and systems. Even New Yacht Beta, which is a distant colony, might be affected, though they aren't 100% sure it will be in the blast zone. The next most important thing, and the one I'm sure many, including Mamo Prey, wished was out there before episode one aired is the fact that the Romulan caretakers on Picard's vineyard, Zaban and Laris, are there because they betrayed the Tal Shiar. It turns out their mission was to destroy the USS Verity, but Zaban had a last minute change of heart he credited to Laris. He even thanks her for changing his mind so Laris can be the hero, I guess. Even though there's a fair chance Yuya Beta will survive the supernova, Zaban says they can never return to the Romulan Empire. In fact, there really isn't any place they'd be safe. They will have to be on their run their entire lives. Picard, easily forgiving Zaban, who just a few minutes before looked as if he may betray Picard, says he knows a place that would be perhaps the safest place in the galaxy from the Tal Shiar, meaning, of course, his vineyard. He then asks if they were still interested in winemaking. So the Romulans aren't there as slaves or as indentured servants. They are there because the Picard family vineyard is the one place they feel safe from the Tal Shiar. It would be closer to witness protection than anything else. Speaking of the Tal Shiar, we learn that they were the bad guys who gave the command codes of the USS Verity to the Romulan governor, but they only gave her partial codes, not enough to move the ship, because they always intended Zaban and Laris to beam up and initiate the self-destruct. Apparently, the one Romulan Tal Shiar ship can't take on the USS Verity and expect to win. But even more so, Picard has a trick up his sleeve just in case the Tal Shiar considered an attack. Two Romulan to Deradex warbirds decloak. In the comic, it clearly says one is decloaking off the port side and the other off the starboard side of the Verity. But in the comic, they both decloak above the Verity. They should also be pointed toward the unnamed Tal Shiar ship, but I suppose these ships look better when drawn from the front. It turns out Admiral Picard is good friends with the captains of these two ships, 
and they have been cloaked in monitoring the situation the entire time. So what looked like it was a Kobayashi Maru for Picard quickly turned into what a screen rant pitch meeting would say is a super easy, barely an inconvenience situation. In fact, super easy, barely an inconvenience is how every source of conflict is resolved in this issue, including one set up in prior books. Last issue, Picard was left with no way to contact the Verity. In this issue, Picard and Musiker simply walk into a Romulan's telecommunication room, pretending to be prisoners of Zaban and Laris. Zaban shoots two Romulans with a single disruptor blast, and they hail the Verity. Once they call the Verity, they find the Romulan governor is in charge of the ship. But rather than this being a major issue they need to overcome, Picard simply says he knows his crew is working hard to retake the ship, and almost instantly the Romulan governor and the other bad Romulans on the Verity all get beamed into the brig because the crew, who the Romulans conveniently left alive, took back the ship. Even Lieutenant Commander Newton, who was knocked out in the last issue, happens to revive just in time for Picard and company to beam up. Zaban's apparent treachery is stopped dead in its tracks by a simple threat from Laris that she will not support or go with him if he continues down his path. In an instant, Zaban realizes Picard was not part of a Starfleet plot to destroy the Romulan Empire and was a good guy after all. Even the five million natives on the planet who Picard was not prepared to evacuate in issue one are apparently no big deal as Picard says he has contacted the Federation and every available ship will be sent to Yu Yacht Beta immediately. And this is all before the fleet being built at Utopia Planitia is even finished. So yes, there are many Starfleet ships already aiding in the evacuation of the Romulan Empire. These last 10,000 ships being built hardly seem that necessary. I do want to bring attention to some lines from Admiral Picard. Admiral Picard from both episode one of the Picard series and these comic books goes out of his way to equate all sentient life. He goes out of his way to tell his lieutenant commander who lost the ship to the Romulans that it wasn't his fault and he should always continue to help people in need, even, I suppose, if Romulans take over your ship and threaten to kill you. Basically, Picard gives speech after speech about how people shouldn't be racist and it's an admirable message, pardon the pun, but when Zaban looks as if he's about to betray Picard and follow his Tal Shiar orders to destroy the Verity, Picard looks at Zaban and says, and I quote, Instead of a frontal attack, you earned my trust. How very Romulan of you. This is the height of hypocrisy. The man was saying minutes ago, don't judge an entire race by the actions of a few corrupt souls. But the minute he is the one betrayed, he throws Romulan around like it's an insult. Like all Romulans are liars and all Romulans will betray you. Worf would often say, These are Romulans. They are without honor. But Picard never agreed. It is totally out of character for him to say this. Any other character, perhaps, but not Admiral Picard. The book ends with Picard back on the colony overseeing the evacuation. He places a call to Geordi LaForge on Utopia Planitia and apologizes for calling so late. Geordi says not to worry, engineers don't sleep. Something I can confirm when I was doing engineering. Geordi asks Picard how things went for him and Picard glosses over everything that has happened by simply saying he had some minor inconveniences. The comic ends with Admiral Picard saying, the future is looking bright, Mr. LaForge. Very bright indeed. It then tells us the story will continue with the premiere episode of Star Trek Picard on January 23rd, 2020, which of course was last week. Picard talking to Geordi, telling him the future is looking very bright, just makes me feel like they were setting us up for the attack on Mars to begin minutes later. I have no way to know if this is true, of course. I almost suspect Geordi was supposed to die in the comic and the last page was going to be Picard losing contact with Geordi, but they maybe decided to bring Geordi into Picard, the TV series, since most of the TNG characters seemed like last minute additions, and that is why the comic is late, but this is again speculation only. 
Overall, while this comic gives us the most answers, it resolved the conflicts in the most boring ways possible. I hope the Picard series does not use these same super easy, barely an inconvenience fixes for all the conflicts that will build up over the season. I have to say the Picard comics would have been decent had this final issue come out on time. But seeing as it did not, I would count anyone who didn't buy them as lucky for saving themselves a few dollars. This final issue was unsatisfying at the best. Worse, since it's clear the 2009 Countdown Comics is no longer canon despite what we were promised by Paramount at the time, I suspect the comics of this same name will be equally ignored in future Trek iterations. While I will be annoyed should that happen, at least that would mean there is future Trek. I'm going to do my best to have my Picard Episode 2 review out sometime tomorrow, Thursday, January 30th. Kapla all and take care. Thank you all for watching my video. Please remember to comment, like, and subscribe. And don't forget to hit that bell icon. Without it, you won't get notifications of new videos. Check out birdoprey5.com, the new home of everything birdoprey5 on the web. You can also check out my forum at juot.net. I'm also on social media, on Facebook, Twitter, and Gab. If you'd like to make a donation, check out paypal.me slash birdoprey5 or on birdoprey5.com. Take care.